So a few years ago, I was having a clean out of one of my old drawers. I came across a purple bandana and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna put that bandana on and I'm gonna do a cover of Sultan's A Swing. Now that video has had over 400,000 views. That's a lot of views for a little man in a bandana. And I thought, you know what? What have you been doing, you absolute whopper? You never did a tutorial. So today we're gonna to run through every lick from Sultan's A Swing in order, not including the solos. If you wanna learn the solos, let me know in the comments below, but I thought that would be a little bit too much. So it's just all the lead licks, the little fills in between. Every single one in order, I think there's like 24 in total. Tabs on my Patreon if it's at all overwhelming because it is quite overwhelming. We're gonna do all of them in order and then I'm gonna go for a pint in an actual pub. So Mark Knopfler very famously uses his fingers instead of a pick. In my opinion, that gives him more dynamic control and definitely makes his delivery more unique. To save time, I'm just gonna explain the notes that I'm playing with my left hand and the techniques. Feel free to try and copy some of the things I'm doing with the right, but I am just finding my own way with it. So I start with a double stop on the fifth fret of the D and the G, index finger. Hit that three times and then I hammer on the third and the fourth fingers to the seven. Then we take an A minor shape in prep for what's coming up and we slide the second finger from the five on the D to the seven. Hit the seven on the G. Then we hit the seven on the D again up to the six on the B, and then I take the second finger and I move that to the seven on the G. Just feels nicer that way. Then we have this little rake. So what's happening there, it's a D minor triad, and you're going from the seven on the G to the six on the B to the five on the E. And I do a little finger roll like that. But as I do it, I take the finger pressure off. So you get some separation in the notes. Then we hit the eight on the high E, back to the five, six on the B. Hit that again. And then we've got hammer on pull off, five, six, five, and then seven on the G. So the first lick in the first verse. So you start with a whole tone bend on the fourth fret of the G, you're gonna bend it up, down, back up, down. And then if you want at the end, I like to do a hammer on pull off from the second fret to the fourth and back. Just resolves to the A, which is what the first chord progression does. Lick two. So we slide our second finger into the 11th fret of the D and our index finger hits the 10 on the B. And we hit this three times with kind of a constant vibrato. Then I do two little muted strums down and I grab an F major bar chord, eight, 10, 10, 10, and I go down, up, down. Here's lick three. Now what's cool about this lick is it repeats a lot. So further on into the lesson, you're gonna be like, oh, Thank God, this one is the same as that one. 
So we start by barring the fifth fret of the D, G, B, basically giving us a C major chord. And we're going to pick those three notes all at the same time. We're going to call it a pinch. And we're going to take the finger pressure off so it's got a staccato delivery. And you do it twice in a row. Then we put the third finger onto the seventh fret of the D and the second finger onto the sixth fret of the B. And we pinch it twice and then pull those two fingers off. Then move our first finger down to the third fret. And we're basically resolving on a B flat. In between some of these notes, you'll hear me bring the right hand in, which gives it um, a percussive element. Here's lick four. So I actually have this down as the pre-chorus, which goes back into the verse. And then um, later on in the song, it'll go into the chorus and the opening little lick has slight variations. So again, it's something that repeats, which should help you memorize it quicker. So it starts with that A minor shape, sliding from the fifth fret of the D to the seventh fret. Go to the seven on the G and then back to the seven on the D. Six on the B and then seven on the D. Now we're going to bar third fret for that B flat triad. Add the pinky to the sixth fret of the B. All you're doing there is kind of taking it from being like an A rooted B flat to um, an E rooted B flat. Just playing around with different inversions. So in between those chords, I tend to bring the hand in and sometimes I catch a muted A with my thumb just to add those percussive elements in. And then we slide that B flat up to the C. And then to end that section, we slide the third finger from the fifth fret of the A to the seven, hammer on the five to the seven on the D, and then hit the index finger on the fifth fret of the G. Lick five is very similar to something we've already done. So we slide into the 11th fret of the D again with the second finger, index finger on the 10. Then we're going to play the 11th fret of the B with the third finger. Take it off. Slide that whole shape back two frets. Pinch and then back two more frets. Pinch. A little bit of vibrato. Now we're on to lick six, which is hard to say, and it's also my favorite lick. It basically descends down an A chord and then kind of resolves on an F to match the chord change. So we start on the 10th fret of the high E with the second finger, pull that off to the nine, 10 on the B, nine on the G, slide that back to seven, then six. Then we hit the seventh fret of the D, quick finger change to fifth fret of the D with the index. And then you're going to slide that down to the third and the second fret. Then we hit the third fret of the A, pull that off to the open and then hit the third fret of the D, which is the note F. And at that point, it's resolved to an F in the song. That's what I can make out anyway. Um, and if it's not right, don't care. I've got a bandana on and it sounds good. Lick seven. You already know it. Yes, on to lick eight. So 
So we start by hitting the 10th fret of the G and the E with our third and pinky. Then we hit the 9th fret and the 8th fret, same two strings, second and index. And then we grab the 10th fret of the G and the B. And then we go down to our B flat. Slide up to C, and then it does it again. And then we're into our chorus. So we start with an A rooted D minor bar chord, 5, 7, 7, 6, but we're going to mute the A string with the index finger to give us a percussive element to it. Start by hitting that muted string with the thumb, then pinch the other three, then take them off, index finger across the fives, and then move that down to the third fret. So you've gone D minor, C, B flat. Then you slide back up to the fifth fret, add the second and the third fingers back onto where they were, but leave the pinky off this time. We've got a muted A, and then we're going to pinch twice and pull off. Once you pull off, you're going to hit those fives. So together you've got this. Then we're going to pinch the 10th fret of the G and the B. I like to use 3rd and 4th fingers for those two notes because it gives me a little bit more control. Um, I actually slide into that again, starting from the 5, which is where we finished. And I pick them again when I arrive. It gives them uh, a little bit more character, and you can hear the journey of the note kind of sliding up. Then we hit the 9 and the 8 on the same two strings. Definitely make it more about the 10s than the 5s. You don't want to do that, it's kind of more... It's like a swoop in, and then boom. You pinch them together. Then you repeat the first bit exactly the same. And then we have that same lick that we did before, sliding from the fifth fret of the A to the seven. Hammer on the five to the seven on the D. And then fifth fret of the G. Index finger. And that's the same for every chorus. Lick number nine. So we're going to take a D7 shape and slide into the ninth fret. It's one of those things that we pinch on its way and then pinch when we get there. Take it back a fret, pinch, and then back up one more fret. Then we take our index finger, bar in the top three strings, we slide it into the tenth fret, and we hit the G and the B, and then when we get there, we pinch all three. Lick 10, it's the first kind of really tricky one in my opinion, but it's also one of the best ones. So we start with a whole tone bend on the seventh fret of the G. Bar the index finger on the fifth fret of the B and the E. We go B, E, B. 
Now we're going to take our third finger to the eighth fret of the B, whole tone bend, and as you do that, you're going to stretch the pinky over to the ninth fret of the E. Play that note, then grab the pre bent B string and let it down. Then the second finger hits the 7 on the high E. Then we grab the 8th fret of the B and we pick it at pitch and then we bend it up, down, up, down, up. Leave it bent up at the end. Now we're going to grab the 8th fret of the E with the pinky, hit the pre-bent note let it down, and then hit the 6 on the B. Lick 11. So we start with the 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the G, slide into the 9. Then grab the 8th fret of the B with the 2nd finger, minor 3rd interval. Then hit the 3rd finger again on the 9, and then slide that back 2 frets. When you get there, you're going to pinch those 2 notes 3 times. And you can give it a little bit of vibrato. Lick 12, another pre-chorus, very similar to the lick we did before. I'm going to slide into those 10s on the G and the B. Then we hit the 9 and the 8 again, and those two 10s on the G and the B. Down to the 3rd fret with our index finger. For our B flat to C slide. And then we finish with this lick. So that's a hammer on from the 5th fret of the D to the 7. And then we're going to go back and forth from the 5th fret of the G to the 7th fret of the D. Twice and then slide the 5th fret of the G to the 7th fret with the index finger. Lick 13, by itself it can be a bit peculiar, but in the mix with some reverb, um, sounds really good. So we start by grabbing the 7th fret of the G with the 3rd finger, pinky on the 8th, you're going to pinch those two notes together and then bend just the third finger up and down several times, eventually letting it back down to resolve on the D. And I even sometimes mute the pinky at the end so you just hear that D resolve. Lick 14. So, we start by sliding our index finger into the 9th fret of the E. Hit it again when you get there. Walking down that A chord again. 10th fret of the B, 9th fret of the G. Then we're going to pull off from the 7th fret of the G to the 6th. Hit the 7 on the D. And then slide the index finger into the 9th fret of the G. Then we're going to do that same kind of double stop bend we just did previously. This time grab the 12 with the 3rd finger and pinky on the 13, G and B. And you're just going to bend the 3rd finger but let it gradually rise. Obviously if you've got your bridge floating like me, it's going to pull the other note um, flat. 
but it's not as obvious in the mix. <sighs> Lick 15. We already know it. Lick 16 now is a double pre-chorus, but the first bit changes again. So we're taking that A minor shape again, sliding from the 5th fret of the D to the 7, G7, back to the D. Now this time we're going to grab the 6 with the index finger but slide it back a semitone to the 5. Then I hit the 8th fret of the G, then the 7, pinky then 3rd finger. I've seen people play it here. And I just don't think that you have the same control. Um, so it kind of makes more sense for me to do it in one position. Like that. And then we've got the B flat C. Lick 17. So we start with a gradual whole tone bend, 12th fret of the B. Then grab the 12 on the E with the pinky. Hit the B again and let it down. Once it's fallen all the way down, we're going to slide into the 14th fret of the G with the second finger. And then pick the 13 on the high E with the index. As you're taking that finger off, you might get a little bit of collateral damage, but that's okay. Lick 18 is similar to one we've already done. Um, slight modulation. So we start with a 12th fret pull off to the 9, high E, pinky to index. Then walk down 10, and 9 again, B then G. And then we pull the 7 off to the 6 like before. 7 on the D. But we're going to jump up an octave now. 10th fret of the B string. Different end note. We're going to do that same 12, 13 double stop bend, but this time it swoops up, down, and then up one more time. So Lick 20 is another double pre-chorus. The first part you already know, it's this lick. So it's that A minor shape sliding up. Should already have that down. And then it moves into your double B flat slide to C. So now we're on to Lick 21. We will have had a chorus, the first solo, another chorus, and then into verse 3. So we start by sliding into the 11th fret of the D with the second finger, and the 10th fret of the B with the index. Then we move up to the 12th fret of the D and the B. It's always the same two strings. This time it's second and third fingers. Then we hit that 12 again on the D and slide everything up to the 14th fret. And when we get there, we grab the B string. Do the same thing again, this time from 14 to 17. And then slide back to 15 
and when you get there, pinch both strings. All together. Lick 22. So this one's really easy. We could do with a breather, right? You're gonna take that D7 shape, slide it up to the ninth fret, like we did before, and a very quick down, up, down. And that's it. I like to use the back of my nail, uh, inside of my fingertips, and then the back of my nail again. Lick 23. They're just getting easier. I think he'd given up by this point. He ran out of licks. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> so, lick 23. Uh, it's exactly the same as one of the uh, earlier ones, but just shorter. So we slide from the seventh fret of the G up to the nine. Hit the eight on the B, and then back to the nine. Lick 24 is the last lick that you will ever need to learn. Okay, it's a double pre-chorus, so like I said, you know most of it already. It's just the first bit that changes. That would then run into a chorus, the second solo, and then that's it, chorus to fade. So let's take a look at the bit that's changed. We're gonna take that A minor shape that we've talked about a lot, but this time when we slide from five to seven, we're actually gonna play it as a double stop. Then hit just the seven on the D, six on the B, and you go back and forth. You'll hear that I keep the D string really quiet. It finishes on the seventh fret of the G, the note D, and then we go to our B flat and C slide. <sighs> Gonna need another bandana after that, well done. If you've got this far, well done. That's all 24 licks from Sultans of Swing. Not including the solos, but remember, like I said, if you want to learn them with me, let me know in the comments below and I'll stick them in a separate video so it's, um, you know, you can, you can have a break, get something to eat in between. Go to the pub, wet your whistle. If you want the tabs or the guitar profile for this lesson, consider checking that out on Patreon. I would appreciate the support. Drop a like, hit subscribe, whack the little bell next to it. Honestly, thumbing up this video really helps it get thrown into the algorithm. Um, drop in a comment as well, honestly. If you've got two seconds to do that, I'd really appreciate it. As I mentioned before, I'm off to the pub now to get a very big pint for my very big mouth. See you soon. <laughs>